so the next topic is drug therapy of hypertension drug therapy of hypertension drug therapy of hypertension you will never understand unless we know the basic physiology so the heading of discussion at the moment is drug therapy drug th therapy but we will never understand unless we know the basics so let's learn the basic concepts basic concepts of the physiology of hypertension basic concept of physiology of hypertension then only and for then after that we'll talk about for basic concept of pharmacology also and then we really come to medicine part how we are going to manage so first of all basic concept of the physiology of physiology bp is equal to cardiac output multiply by peripheral resistance this cardiac output cardiac output is equal to heart rate multiply by stroke volume it means what blood pressure is equal to heart rate multiplied by stroke volume multiplied by peripheral resistance friends this is the basic gist very frequently asked question why wa theory mcq everywhere this is useful this is a basic physiology of hypertension if you know this basic then you can manage in actual practice also you can manage any patient of hypertension so bp is uh, stroke volume heart rate and peripheral resistance okay so now we we'll take one by one so we talk about now having learned the basic physiology now we talk about pharmacology what are the drugs which are going to control heart rate so drug which are going to control heart rate are are heart rate are beta blockers beta blockers and the new drug has come evabridine 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 this is the latest drug prospective new question mcq question very important every all of you know about a beta blocker evabridine is a new drug okay so this drug we are going to control the heart rate now what are the so this is the pharmacology i am talking about pharmacology now we talk about medicine what are the condition clinical condition where we are using this drug to control hypertension so we will be using indication the indications are the indications are indications are we will be using in case of coronary artery disease and second condition where we are going to use this drug to heart rate are hyperthyroidism hyperthyroidism okay hyperthyroidism okay so there are two thing where we are going to use this two drug now before i come to the stroke volume i like to talk something extra about this new drug evabridine let me talk a few lines about the basic pharmacology of evabridine is a new drug this question will pakka come to you in your this year entrance exam evabridine so evabridine evabridine pharmacology a few words line so first of all it reduces heart rate okay but it has action only to reduce heart rate downward arrow is reduce less decrease why it is so important to write only because you know beta blocker have action in plenty of other places Plenty of other places, but 
Evabeni is going to reduce only heart rate. It means what? Those conditions like bronchial asthma or erectile dysfunction. Those conditions like, write down, bronchial asthma, erectile dysfunction, where beta blocker are contraindicated, you can use this drug. Second point about Evabedin, it acts on the funny sodium channels. It acts on the funny sodium channels. Channels. And the main side effect is, the main side effect of Evabedin is, it lead to hyperlucency. 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 Thickney are side effect is hyper lu. Hyperlucency means there is a glaring, extra light on the eyes, glaring it is typically what we say, suppose you are going on the road in the night, a car comes in the front and he has a headlight on and suddenly you get a glaring light, that is a type of hyperlucency. So friends, this is a very important prospective new question is there, new question, prospective new question in pharmacology and viva also of course theory you have to write it down now second component that we are going to control in hypertension is stroke volume so again before i talk about the pharmacology of the stroke volume let's talk about basic physiology of stroke volume remember in the exam when you are writing your theory question also you have to write exactly like this the way i am writing okay so now we talk about stroke volume. Now the basic concept about stroke volume. Basic concepts about stroke volume. The end of diastolic volume of each ventricle is around 120 ml. End diastolic volume of each ventricle is about 120. Actually, may it is 100 to 120, but for easy calculation, I am writing 120. And systolic volume of each ventricle is around 40 ml. That means at the end of the systole. Ventricles are still not empty, they still contain about 30 40 ml of the blood. It means what? With each stroke, around 80, 70 to 80 ml blood goes out. This is known as stroke volume. Stroke volume. It means what? Somebody asks you a question. What is stroke volume? So, you can write down the definition of stroke volume, basic concept, physiology. Write down the amount of blood, the amount of blood pumped out by each ventricle, amount of blood pumped out by each ventricle in each stroke, amount of blood pumped out by each ventricle in each stroke is known as stroke volume. Amount of blood pumped out by each ventricle in each stroke is stroke volume. Okay? And this you can detect best by echocardiography. 
simplest way and easiest ways to is eco echocardiography and remember uh, and remember out of 120 80 ml goes out it means how much 66.6 percent goes out and this is known as ejection fraction ef is ejection fraction okay all these are viable question this you don't have to write in theory this you don't have to write theory when you are writing the question you don't have to write but all are important mcq and viva question so this is for important from mcq and viva they are going to ask you this question in your final prop viva question so they are viva question final prop plus mcqs everything and out of the, this is the most important normal normal is around 60 to 72 percent normal is around 60 to 72 percent is the is the normal ejection fraction although some people write some books write 65 to 72 also some variation is there by large 60 65 70 72 is a normal important viva as well as mc question so now we talk about drugs pharmacology drug which are going to reduce the stroke volume pharmacology basic pharmacology so drugs which reduce stroke volume are drugs which reduce stroke volume number one again beta blocker again beta blocker second is diuretic 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 and third is nitrate this very important mcq and viva question also drug which reduce stroke volume are beta blocker diuretic and nitrate so now we'll talk one by one beta blocker beta blocker not only reduce the heart rate but they also reduce the pumping action of the myocardium beta blockers beta blockers beta blockers they not only reduce the heart rate they reduce heart rate they also reduce the pumping action of the myocardium so this reduces cardiac contractility contractility so it reduces heart rate and reduces cardiac contractility is reduced by the beta blocker that's why beta blocker are contraindicated in congestive heart failure simply but there is some change has come about that change i'll discuss very shortly but at the moment beta blocker are contraindicated in congestive heart failure diuretics diuretic the most common diuretic used in hypertension is thiazide thiazide Thi this question came in this year may pgi exam if this question came which of the fall which of the following uh, diuretic is used most commonly in hypertension is thiazide this is the latest question from PGI Chandigarh, PGI exam, this May exam, okay. But remember, diuretics are, diuretics are the drug of choice in heart failure, heart failure, but beta blocker are contraindicated. So, so they are the drug of choice in, so hypertension, thyroid we use in hypertension, and we also use in case of congestive heart failure. Third drug is nitrate. Nitrate, how it acts? It is a peripheral venodilator. 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 It means what? It means what? 
the whole blood is pulled into the peripheral venules thereby preload is reduced so thereby so it what it it towards reduces the preload what is preload is the amount of blood right down what is preload is a simple all of you know it's just basic physiology right down preload is the amount of blood it is the amount of blood which returns in the right heart amount of blood coming back by the veins into the right heart is preload got it so if you reduce the preload if you reduce the preload then the amount of blood then the amount of blood going to lungs will be reduced the amount of blood going into lungs will be reduced so that will decongest the lung got it so this is regarding the drug which reduces the stroke volume beta blocker diuretic and nitrate are the three drugs now we come to third component peripheral resistance so again we first learn the basic physiology so first we learn the regarding the peripheral resistance basic concepts basic concepts basic concept zoom karenge basic concept zoom karenge isko yaar aur pass aur pass yeah basic concept about the peripheral resistance about peripheral resistance here the arteriole now first point primary site of peripheral resistance is write down arteriole primary site of resistance is arteriole arteriole is very frequently asked question arteriole r t riol is a very frequently asked question why about theory mcq arteriole are the primary site of peripheral resistance and in the arteriole we have two receptor one is the alpha receptor and others are the beta receptor alpha r constrictor constrictor beta r dilators alpha r if you stimulate alpha receptor going to constrict the arteriole and beta r the dilators and very important point peripheral resistance b peripheral resistance is 1 by r4 r is the radius of the arteriole of the arteriole radius of arteriole it means what and this is a very frequently question from physiology this is a very important mcq question from physiology so it means narrow the arteriole many fold will go the peripheral resistance obviously so if that means if i dilate the arteriole the peripheral resistance come down yeah so we have understood remember as the peripheral arteriole will constrict bp will go many folds simple mathematics but if we dilate the arteriole the peripheral resistance will go down and bp will go down okay so mcq question our primary site is arteriole and peripheral resistance is 1 by r4 so if now if i give alpha blocker a drug Which is going to block? There will be unopposed, yeah, beta action. That lead to what? Dilatation and peripheral resistance come down. BP will go down. This was the basic physiology. Now we talk about pharmacology. Drugs which can reduce peripheral resistance. Drugs which can reduce peripheral resistance. Drugs which can reduce. peripheral resistance are alpha blockers 
they are used in condition like elderly person especially males why males because alpha blocker will not only will reduce the bp but it will also increase the urine outflow better in case of benign patient having benign prostatic hypertrophy so elderly men especially having benign prostatic hypertrophy are the ideally suitable drug because they are going to have two advantage going to control the blood pressure as well as urine outflow obstruction is reduced the urine flow is better in benign prostatic hypertrophy we can also use in case of chronic renal failure we can use safely in alpha blocker the first is the alpha blocker drug which are going to reduce peripheral resistance is the heading under which we are talking about now we talk about other drugs which can reduce peripheral resistance are calcium channel blockers calcium channel blockers they are ideally suitable for for again we can use in case of chronic renal failure we can use for chronic renal failure okay we can use in scleroderma scleroderma where we have a renault phenomena is there okay and we have a drug called nimodipine nimodipine dipine this we specially use in case of subarachnoid hemorrhage we specially use in case of subarachnoid hemorrhage okay specially use but we do not use the, uh, we do not contraindication we do not use in case of coronary artery disease because they because one of the main side effect is side effect is tachycardia so we do not use in case of uh, cad the third drug third drug is acei and they are specially used for indication specially used for for hypertension with cad zoom karenge aur hypertension with cad hypertension with congestive heart failure congestive heart failure they are specially used for hypertension with diabetes diabetes and they are used in unilateral unilateral renal artery stenosis Unilateral renal artery stenosis are the condition. Some of the condition where we are using these drugs. Okay, coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure, diabetes, and unilateral are renal artery stenosis. But what about contraindication? Where we never use contraindication. Again, contraindication are we do never use in pregnancy. this was the latest question in last year dnb exam also all india pg exam also we never use in pregnancy and we never use in crf because one of the main side effect of this drug is they lead to they cause hyperkalemia they lead to this very frequently asked question they lead to hyperkalemia and hyperkalemia is a feature of crf so we never use and third important condition where we never use is in case of bilateral renal artery stenosis we never use in bilateral renal artery stenosis are some of the contraindication of hypertension okay now right sir well so we this how we are going to manage so we have covered the all the three aspect of hypertension nicely you understood 
because you know the basic physiology, you know the basic pharmacology and of course now you know the indication where we are going to use this drug or not. Now we have the fourth category which reduce, the, uh, we have one more category of drug which are going to reduce peripheral resistance are direct vasodilator. Direct vasodilator. Direct vasodilators, they include direct vasodilator. They include sodium nitroprusside. Sodium nitroprusside. This is one drug. It's a drug of choice. Drug of choice in hypertensive emergencies. Emergencies. It's a drug of choice of hypertensive emergencies, sodium nitroprusside. Then one more drug that we use which is direct with the director is alpha methyl dopa. This question came in this year AIMS may exam also and we have a hydralazine. Both these drugs we use in pregnancy. Both these drugs we use in pregnancy with hypertension. Pregnancy with hypertension. Pregnancy. Both these the drugs and this question came in this year AIMS exam also and this question came in this year PGI exam also. Drug of choice of pregnancy is alpha methyl dopa. So friends, this was the what we talked about direct vasodilators. We got three drugs. One is the sodonatoproside, other is the alpha methyl dopa, and third is the hydralazine. Now let's take two cases, two questions very frequently asked, viva question as well as MCQ also, of course, we will talk about uh, uh, theory also, but let us take a case. I think by now you must have been tired also. Let me refresh you. So, refresh kar de aapko? Yeah. So, let us take a case. You are sitting in the class right now and one of your known to person comes to the center and he sends a slip inside and the center in charge give you the slip that so and so is waiting for you outside. Okay. Well, you get up from the class, you go out and you find one of your uncle G is standing outside. He is a very high profile executive in a big director in a big company and he says, you say, yes uncle, what happened? He said, Dr. Saab, I was sitting in my office normally and working and one, one doctor came in the office and he was checking the BP of all the patient, all the people in the office, not the patient or in the office and he checked my blood pressure also. Then you ask how much was the BP? He says my BP was, doctor says my BP is 220 by 140 is obviously is very very high. You say yes very high. Your uncle you says yes do that doctor also said the BP is very very high. So he now he asked you a question. Now you have what you like to advise now he says doctor sir, aapki kya salah hai? what is your opinion about me? So I have got four options look write down the option and what option you will advise option a you say oh doctor oh, oh uncle ji uncle ji don't worry don't worry you just reduce the body weight go for exercise 
स्टॉप स्मोकिंग वगैरह वगैरह दैट मीन्स लाइफ स्टाइल मॉडिफिकेशन लाइफ स्टाइल मॉडिफिकेशन यू ओके यू से ओके राइट नाउ ओके यू डू ऑल दिस थिंग यू मीट मी आफ्टर वन वीक राइट नाउ आई एम बिजी आई एम अटेंडिंग द क्लास ऑफ डॉक्टर भाटिया आई कैन अफोर्ड टू मीट द मिस्टर क्लास एंड यू सेंड इम होम एंड ऑफ कोर्स यू कम बैक कम टू क्लास इमीडिएटली क्लास इज गोइंग ऑन सेकेंड ऑप्शन ओ अंकल जी अंकल जी यू टेक दिस ट्रीटमेंट यू राइट सम ओपनी ट्रीटमेंट you write one prescription and you give to him please please take it and you meet me after one week i am busy listening to dr bhatia option c oh uncle ji this bp is very very high you need urgent hospitalization and go and admit get admit in the ward option d no no uncle ji bp is very very high it can create problem any time go and get admitted in a big hospital maybe apollo fortis max or any big hospital of your place and get admitted in the icu your uncle you say i don't know anybody in the hospital you also you will say oh hey, don't worry don't don't worry the director of that big hospital is my friend i am giving call to the director you will not have any problem so yes gentleman you have four thing to think of first is the lifestyle modification bp 220 by 140 your uncle ji has come working comfortably he had no problem at all and he come to you lifestyle modification opd ward or icu what is your opinion think it over and reply in 30 second and your time starts now think it over how much time you need to what is your advice no talking please yeah so how many of you say lifestyle modification raise a hand anybody please please okay opd what i see you the most of you are saying icu icu is the most common wrong answer who said what what option c raise the hand this is the second common wrong answer the right answer is opd treatment why this is the answer why not others look uncle ji has come his bp is very high and he said Doctor sir I was sitting comfortably in my office he had no complaint at all but bp is very high so we use the term as what we use this entity as a hypertensive urgency the word we use is hypertensive urgency urgency hypertensive urgency bp is high bp high hai but no end organ damage no end organ damage so you treat him by opd treatment you give opd treatment opd treatment this is very frequently asked question why why question also they are the last this question you know why our mcq also of course you are right in theory also when you are writing the hypertension you have to write it but suppose the uncle ji says doctor sir my i have got bp high hai he tells you and my head is bursting by there is some problem in the eyes i have pain chest or breathing problem it means what he has some end organ damage high bp with some end organ damage that is known as hypertensive emergency that is known as hypertensive emergency that should be hospitalized in, in icu and bp should be brought down urgently so in hypertensive emergency very high blood pressure with end organ damage in urgency 
high BP but no end organ damage. For that, we give OPD. In emergency, we give ICU treatment. Now, what are the drugs that we use in hypertensive emergencies? The drug that we use in hypertensive emergencies are drugs that we use in hypertensive emergency are zoom karenge are first of all sodium nitro proside i have just written also otherwise we can use injection labetalol le be Libetalol, Libetalol, Libetalol. We we can also use injection hydralazine. We can also use injection. Hydralazine. Sodium nitroproside is the one drug that is used most commonly used drug is sodium nitroproside. We can also use injection nitroglycerin. NTG is nitroglycerin injection. We can also use injection nitroglycerin. We can use okay, and we can also use. Asmolol injection, asmolol injection, asmolol. So they are the drugs. But remember, sodium nitroproside is the most commonly used drug. Now there are certain new drugs, recent advances, new drugs, new drugs for hypertension. The recent advances drug we are using are injection phenaldopam, phenaldopam, injection, injection uradipel, uradipel, injection aliskyrin, aliskyrin. Aliskyrin, phenaldopam, uradipil, aliskyrin are the drug, and we have one more drug, bosentan, bosentan, it is a write down, it is a endothelin, it is a endothelin receptor blocking drug. This is a endothelin receptor blocking drug. Number two, endothelin is the most powerful vasoconstrictor in the body. Endothelin is the most powerful vasoconstrictor in the body. So that's why it's a vasodilator, but it has not been approved as a antihypertensive. But it has not been approved as a antihypertensive drug. Why? Why? Because it does not act via renin aldosterone axis. I repeat again. Bosentan is a endothelin receptor blocking drug. Number two, endothelin is the most powerful vasoconstrictor in the body. But 
this drug is not approved as an anti hypertensive drug because this does not act via renin aldosterone axis. So, now this drug has been approved, approved for which condition? This drug has been approved for primary pulmonary arterial hypertension. This question came in last year on India PG exam. And this drug is also had been approved for Reynolds phenomena. Reynolds phenomena. And this question came in this year PGI exam May 2015 and this question came in last year on India PG exam. So, Bosentan is used for primary pulmonary arterial hypertension and Renault phenomena. So, they are the recent drugs and this question again came in last year DNB exam. This was the in India PG exam last year and this is PGI. So, you are bound to get this question this year also. Surely, you will get any question from this thing. So, friends, this is all about the hypertension. I hope I could satisfy the student of undergraduate pre-final final. You will get a long question. You write down this much as it is you write down as it is starting from this place. Okay, starting from this place the way I have written. Starting from this place, write down and every MCQ has been covered up and every viva question has been covered up. So, my undergraduate friends, you are bound to get this question in your exam, 100 percent come. Hypertension ke bigger medicine ka paper incomplete hai. And of course, MCQ also. So, I am leaking the paper to you <laughs> because I told you this question will come in your exam. But I am doing it very legally. There is nothing illegal about it. This is all about hypertension. Okay.